What's up, everybody? Misty Please here. Today, we're going to be talking about my favorite five Pokemon games. As you can see right here, I had quite a bit to choose from, so it's pretty hard to just choose five. Stick around and see what I think makes number one. So on today's video, we're going to be continuing the series, Miss Pigs, where I choose five of my favorite games from any given genre or console. And today we're going to be taking a look at Pokemon, a series a franchise that's been near and dear to my heart since the late 90s, whether it be a card, game, show, it's a franchise that's always been around, and I've played here and there, almost year in, year out, in some shape or form. So without further ado, let's get to my favorite five Pokemon games. So the first game we're going to be looking at today is going to be Pokemon Snap for Nintendo 64. A soft-hearted game with a casual feel where you try to take the most interesting pictures of all types of Pokemon from casual to rare. But don't let this game's soft underbelly fool you. It's got plenty of interesting ways for you to use the tools given to you throughout the game. With this game only having a few core mechanics, you can tell the developers really took their time designing each level. Throughout each level of the game, you're going to be tasked with having to solve environment puzzles as well as Pokemon puzzles to be able to get the different shots that you're going to need to unlock different things throughout the game. You'll go from deep dank caves and hunter Pokemon to throwing pester balls at Mew in space and everything in between and there's lots of laughs to be had. And you'll end up racking your brain for hours on end trying to figure out all the different puzzles and all the different secrets to get the different shots throughout this game. All in all, I think Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo 64 is a must have for any Pokemon lover. start to get serious. Pokemon Stadium would be the first Pokemon I would play after Red for the Game Boy. And it was such a step up for me back then. I cannot describe to you nowadays how it felt. But it's an amazing game. Starting off here with the mini games, if you got some friends around, these can keep, keep you entertained for hours. There's hilarious. There's a fair amount of them. You could even bring in the first generation Pokemon from your Game Boy games to fight with you. And in this iteration of Pokemon, they left all notions of walking behind. It's all about the battle. Submission going down! Yeah, it's a hit! Oh! Is it down in the microphone? Back in the day, seeing your favorite Pokemon go from the Game Boy screen to fully rendered 3D animated characters like this was nothing less of mind blowing. If you ask me, the character models and textures still hold up today. And speaking of battles, there's a lot of them in this game. You're going to get many hours of fun out of this game. And I think, if you like Pokemon, this one's a no-brainer. Back to speed! Begin round two! And as an added bonus, if you have the transfer pack, you can even play your first generation Pokemon games on your TV via Pokemon Stadium. Being able to do this back in the day 
blew my mind. Not a whole lot of people knew about it, and it's still pretty cool being able to do it today. No GameCube, no Game Boy Player, no Game Boy Player disc needed. I have to bring up Pokemon Stadium 2. Now this is definitely the more definitive version of the overall series. Bigger Pokemon roster, better flashier attacks, more areas, more events, more mini games. But for me, my heart lies with the first. And just in case you were wondering, yes, you can play your second generation Pokemon games on Pokemon Stadium 2 via the transfer pack. So after taking a long hiatus with Pokemon, this would be the first one I would come back to after Coliseum for the GameCube. And tell you what, I was taken for quite a surprise. I really liked this. Now, it didn't really get, you know, very good reviews. It wasn't exactly received very well by its fans. But I thought they did a bang up job. And if you love the originals, this is pretty much blow for blow. A remake, upgrade, enhanced version of the first Pokemon. Granted, you do have to throw the balls a little bit differently at the Pokemon. It doesn't matter. You get used to it real quick. And I thought it made for a nice change up of things. And with the added ability to be able to trade different Pokemon with all kinds of different players, link your Pokemon Go account and fully customize your character's outfit, it was pretty cool. And even with all the new flair, I felt the game kept its core mechanics with a stylish new look. And as a quick honorable mention, I have to talk about Pokemon Go. Like millions of other people in the world, once it launched, I quickly fled out of the world searching for Pokemon. And my main goal was to get all the Pokemon from the Kanto region. I didn't quite get there, I got really close. Maybe one day I'll pick it back up. solid battle system in place, it seemed like the Game Freak really doubled down their efforts to reinforce the overall structure of the story and environment of the game, making for a much more immersive playthrough for the character. And this map is vast. You're going to spend a lot of time exploring this map. Now the way you catch Pokemon in this game is a little bit different them catch them from the Game Boy entries if you've never played these before. You get snacks and you go to these areas and you put the snacks there. And there's a few of them throughout the game and when you catch something the snacks go off. And I love how they put Mount Battle in this game. I spent so much time on Mount Battle. And I know this game doesn't come cheap nowadays. Especially if you're going to get a CIB. But let me assure you that this game is the pinnacle when it comes to 3D Pokemon games. 
this game is Game Freak at their finest hour. This game, in many ways, is just as good as Gale of Darkness. I prefer Gale of Darkness. That's probably because that's the one I started with. That's the one I played more. I own them both. I played through them both. Colosseum brings the heat. And the main protagonist in this game looks like a straight badass. So after being a Poke Collector for many, many years, playing many of the games over the years. I've always felt out of the ones I played, there was one game that was just a cut above the rest. So my overall history with Pokemon Emerald isn't as deep as some of my other Pokemon games, but you better believe it's rich. I got this game probably about 10 years ago, and I've probably only played through it about three times, because two of those times I went for an almost 100% game, and if you know a whole lot about this game, there's a lot to it when it comes to secrets and extra stuff you can go after outside the main storyline. And look at the reflections in this water. I really felt like the graphical improvements compared to the last installments before this game were vast. The overall core battle mechanics remain unchanged from the prior installments to this one, but the sprites look much sharper. Even when I blow this game up and put it on my 55 inch HD TV, the sprites and textures still look good, and I'm always surprised. And I don't want to talk too much about the graphics, but the added effects that they put on this game, I really feel like were a miracle on the Game Boy Advance. And the environments in this game are ever-changing, and it's much different in layout and overall structure than the Kanto region. And at the time of release, that wasn't received very well, but I didn't play it until mere years later, so it was fine with me. And they added a bunch of different elements in this game to really immerse you in the environment and make you feel like you're part of it. And the triple threat of having beautiful graphics, solid battle system, and driving storyline will keep players going for hours on end, trying to catch them all. And I would say as long as you keep up with your level, the battles in this game overall aren't super, super challenging. But, if you end up making it to Steven, and you end up fighting him, you better be ready, because he brings the heat, and he's not easy to beat. So with that being my favorite Pokemon map, roster, and overall graphical style I like to play with when I'm playing Pokemon games, wins Pokemon Emerald, my number one choice for Pokemon games.
So those are going to be my top five Pokemon picks 2022. Now I got a whole lot to catch up on when it comes to handheld Pokemon games. Pretty much after the third generation, I fell off. I didn't keep up with the DS and 3DS games, and there's a few Switch games I didn't keep up with either. But that's alright. I'm still looking forward to catching them all. Um, Mystic Leaves, stay safe out there.